So, as I mentioned, the title of this lesson is You Are a Gift. So every time I say you are a gift, I would like for you, whether you're in the room, in Zoom or in YouTube, to say, I am the gift. So, you are the gift. Indeed you are. Now let's do some distinctions here. What would it feel like if then somebody comes to a holiday party? I didn't bring a gift, I brought myself because I am the gift. <laughs> Very good. I am the gift. How would that feel with that arrogant statement? Let me, let me ask you, how would that feel? How, how would you know that it just didn't ring with you? Okay. When, when somebody says something like that, is it true that you can sense when there's a hollowness or a shallowness to it? Yeah. How do you do that? Intuition, you feel it with your heart. It's an energy, right? And we uh, actually had on our bookmark the book, The Heart Math Solution, which talked about how our heart emanates frequency and we can intuit or sense that frequency. And so if somebody says that in a shallow way, they're, they're speaking from their little selves, from the human perspective, from the I am separate from you, from the ego edging God out. Speaking from the dimension that is not the depth of who we truly are. Now, imagine somebody who comes to you in your presence with it, a sacred and divine sense and says, I am the gift. How would you sense the difference from that person? How would you describe that you have sensed the difference? Your heart would feel an expansion. That's a beautiful expression. Would you have a sense that this person had a bigger perspective in mind? That when they spoke it, they were speaking from a unity perspective, an awareness of all life being interconnected, that there was something more than the individual human being. There would be a sense that when the individual said, I am the gift, understanding that they are the vessel for life. The vessel, the vehicle, the conduit, whatever word you want to use. And the sense would be, no, I don't know at all, but I know I am connected to all. So, you are the gift. You are the gift. How comfortable are you with that? And each time that you say it, you go from one layer, perhaps, to a deeper layer, to a deeper layer. So, Bruce Lipton, how many people know Bruce Lipton? Once a, a, a chiropractor, he's actually been to Chico. We've hosted him many years ago. He's now a, a well-known metaphysician, scientist. He speaks about matter is an illusion. Matter, the skin, these bones. Why? Because we all know we're made up of atoms. And the atoms are 99.9999999999996 base. Fun to think about it this way. If you were to remove all the empty space contained in every atom of every person on Earth, the overall volume of particles that remain 
would be smaller than a sugar cube. How much would that sugar cube weigh? The weight of the sum of the total of every human on earth. Because that's weighing the particles, not the space. So in the book Supernatural, which is the book that we're reading until the end of December by Joe Dispenza, he talks a lot about the space that we are. So look around the room here. Is there more space than there are people? So maybe let's just imagine ourselves that we are the atom, and here's all the space. We know that we are largely energy now. That wasn't traditionally known, you know, his, you know, in history. And when I think about space, I think about, so this is, in this space, spirit, all potential, nothingness, no thing, and yet all possibility. Yet it's all interconnected. Because even though you look at me as though I am separate, all of the atoms are being exchanged, whether it's through my voice, through my skin, whatever form. And uh, the Buddhists and the Hindu speak about energy as chakras. Now, our medical system hasn't quite caught up with that, or you, if you want to say it that way, because the medical field pays attention to the physical, not non-physical energy. You know that humans at rest actually produce 100 watts of power? Because of all those atoms and all that energy, we have power. So if you're mostly space and energy, what is the gift that you are? That's right, consciousness. It's your consciousness and how you choose to see yourself with another human being or as a part of this interconnectedness that you are. You bring consciousness. You are the gift of life and light. You are the gift of love, peace, joy, beauty. You are the gift because you are the vessel through which God, higher power, universal source, how life comes into expression. Where's the kingdom of God? Within. That doesn't just mean inside your body. It means, you know, the doctors really can't get to your consciousness. You know that, right? People have amputations. That doesn't change their consciousness and who they are. So do you understand the gift that you are? The vessel of love, the vessel of peace, the vessel of power. And you get to choose what you're bringing through that vessel. And below the vessel is all possibility. So I bring inspiration, you bring love, you bring peace. We all bring the different dimensions, just like looking at the diamond with the different facets. We're each bringing the God attributes into expression. So when you go deep and not shallow, past the ego, and understanding the consciousness that you are, you bring your divinity with you. And then you realize that no matter where you go, you bring that divinity, that potential, that expression. And then it's not just your awareness, like I, aware, I am aware that I am the gift. 
But the other side of that is then, and I get to choose how to express. It's the same coin. The awareness and then how you choose to express those attributes of life. So hold that concept for a second. Have you ever realized how sometimes you get your own self in the way of things? Anybody ever done that? Now, um, last weekend I got to celebrate my daughter getting her white coat as a physician assistant. Yay! Very proud of her. She is a gift, indeed. And um, I had planned to come back and have a full day to do other things, but you know how air travel goes. So I didn't get home till late Monday night. And I had a lot of things to try to catch up on. And one of the things that I worried about, stressed about, and realized later feared about, was that um, I had a rental where the woman was my tenant for seven years, and um, she had a stroke and then passed away. So I was meeting with the family who don't know me. And for a landlord, I think one of the most stressful things is move out because people want their money back. And how do you determine natural wear and tear versus this is not in the condition it should be? So, you know, I am fretting about getting my seven-year-old paperwork, the move out sheet, where are the photos, and preparing myself mentally for the discussions that would uh, unfold. And so, on Wednesday night, I'm meeting with the family on Thursday. I, I realized for myself, okay, stop fretting over the tangible. I am meeting people who are in grief, meeting people who don't know me. I don't know what they trust and don't trust. And so what I really need to do is bring myself, my compassion, what I know as a minister and a practitioner, even though they think they're meeting a landlord. See the shallow versus the depth? So I get to the house, and there's only the daughter, so it's not like three of them, you know, like walking through the house with me. So that was a little bit of relief. And, of course, I spend time asking questions. How are you? How did it go with your mom? You know, tell me more. Share with me where you're at. I'm sure there's a lot going on for you. Managing an estate is not easy. And we probably talked for like 15 minutes outside. She had her mom's car packed, you know, with stuff and looked like she was ready to go. So as we create this connection together and establish what I'll say, you know, relationship and trust, um, she then says, as we start to move towards the house, well, you know, the house is structurally good and not thrashed. Good. But I walk into the house and I freeze. Because all the furniture is gone. But seven years worth of dust. There's garbage up to the counter in the kitchen. Nothing has been wiped down. The refrigerator is full of mold. There's mold on the wall. <laughs> and I, I was sort of caught off guard. And of course I worked through the situation and she really just wanted to get out of there and said, you have the deposit, I paid a full month's rent. If you need more than that, let me know. I'm leaving now. And so she left and I sort of sat in the house and I said to myself, I wasted a lot of energy fretting about the business that needed to happen and what I was going to say and how I was going to say it. And, and really, I am glad that the night before I decided I was really showing up as a person to connect with somebody in grief. And while I can't say that I'm happy that I have a filthy house, it doesn't feel like it's a gift. <laughs> It did make me aware, what's the most important thing here? That connection, that person who now moves forward. 
And, you know, as far as the house, yeah, it'll get back into the condition it needs to be. And now I get to participate in the economics and hire some people and there's some jobs to do and, and be the vessel where money will move through me. Of course, that's the key about money is it should be moving and not stagnant. And what a wonderful opportunity that I am in to be able to do that. So I said to myself, I'm not going to repeat, I'm not going to plan to repeat my worry, my stress, and all that discussion. I'm going to move forward by inviting those who are willing to now connect with me. And then I realized it's the relationships I'm going to build now with people who I don't even know yet. Whoever does the rugs, the walls, the paint, the I'm creating relationship, and isn't that really what life is all about? And to bring my gift to those people while those people will bring their gift to me. What came to me was, <laughs> seek ye first. Yes, I seeked first on Wednesday night that I make the connection and give up on all the business stuff. Seek ye first. So if you choose to do your spiritual practice every day, you will be reminding yourselves that you are a gift. You are the gift of consciousness. And you carry the attributes of God. So what is it that you're going to allow to unfold? What are you going to choose to think, to share, to be? How will you keep your heart open and allow that flow that we feel whether we say I am a gift shallowly or I am a gift with the understanding that we are all divine and sacred. Eckhart Tolle said, be the silent watcher of your thoughts and behavior. You are beneath the thinker. You are the stillness beneath the mental noise. You are the love and joy beneath the pain. And when you know that, you bring that with you to the person you meet and they sense that. Okay, a couple more things. You know, you are the gift, so who's the giver? Some people might say, well, God is the giver, giving the gift of life. But I want to make sure that you understand that God is not giving life to you because that feels like separation. The anthropomorphic male old God giving to us. No. I think I want to switch to the podium mic. Can I do that? So God is not giving life to you. It's a giving of life. God is uh, not tangible per se, but you are the expression of life. There is no separation. You believe that? So if you don't have self-worth, if you were taught younger, um, about shame and guilt and other untruths about who you truly are, then you will have, feel that you have nothing to give. But if you can remind yourself with your daily spiritual practice that you are not to be shamed or guilty, but rather to know your truth, that I am loved, that I'm whole, that I'm perfect, that I'm complete, then you will see the gifts that you are and you will, um, then you will see the gift and that you have plenty to give. Does that make sense? So technically, it's not like when I pray that I say, bring me a new job, and that God has to go find a way to bring me a new job. All possibility and potential are already right here. What I have to do is open myself up, open my consciousness to know that if I feel worthy and I'm open to accepting something, chemistry, 
is going to happen to find me the job that allows me to express my creative gift. So everything is already here. It doesn't really need to be created from a God perspective. It needs to be that we are willing to, and yet you are the gift. All right, skip ahead. So if you're the gift, how are you going to show up at your next holiday party? <laughs> With a big bow on your head. <laughs> With a guitar. <laughs> With a smile. With an open heart. With a consciousness that is aware that I am the gift. that you are bringing any attribute of God you choose to the presence and the place where you are. You are the gift that chooses to express yourself as joy, love. Namaste. Now, Warren, you get to put an extra.